I wouldn't get a, a diet plan from someone who's obese. No. Um, you know, if, if, if it's not working for them, it obviously doesn't work. And there's a lot of doctors out there, the doctors that are overweight. And you've got to question, how can a doctor be overweight? Surely they should know better. And that, that points to the fact that there's so much misinformation out there. Maybe I should buy that red light therapy device I've been wanting for a while now. People are starting to prioritize their health. People are starting to go, this is this is some real shit. You know, there's, there's this virus across the world. It's killing a whole bunch of people. You're not going to play catch up with your health. You know, it's not like you can just flick a switch and in two, three months, your, your health's just going to pick up. The people have woken up to that now and they're going, okay, it's time to prioritize our health. Welcome, my name is Matthijs and you're listening to Injured Dumbass, your go-to podcast if you want to get rid of your injuries and optimize your health. I've seen more than 40 physiotherapists, podiatrists, had a knee surgery, an MRI scan and saw many more professionals that didn't know how to help me with my injuries. And after five years of struggling, a man named Gerben Hierik helped me with a fairly unknown form of therapy called PDTR. He fixed my knee stabilization in two hours something that all the previous professionals could not achieve. And after that experience, I swore to dedicate my life to learning and sharing problem-solving knowledge. Everything to optimize your health and help you to get rid and stay away from injuries. Gezondheid draait niet om voeding, maar het draait om energie. Het draait dus om elektromagnetisme opwekken. En het is niet voeding afhankelijk. Humans evolved to live outdoors, with exposure to natural light from the sun. As such, your cells prioritize using certain wavelengths of light to make energy. A modern indoor lighting does not have the full spectrum of light you will get from the sun, which is where red light therapy comes into the equation, harnessing the benefits of red and near-infrared light. The red light therapy is scientifically proven to improve muscle endurance, muscle recovery, sleep, circadian rhythm, inflammation, skin complexion, and much more. And multiple of the previous health experts that I had on the injured dumbass use it themselves and use it for their patients. And they all buy from the two people that I have on today. So welcome to Injured Dumbass. My name is Matthijs and today's, today my guests are Nick Hutse and Holly Campbell, the owners and founders of Mycondria. Bam. <laughs> so guys, how is the weather in, in in the UK? Because Nick, you're from South Africa, and Holly is yeah. from the UK, right? Holly is also from the UK, um, but I mean also from South Africa. <laughs> but she's got oh, a right. she's got a um, British citizenship as well. Um, but yeah, at the moment the weather's not that good today. Um, we've actually had a bit of sun the last few days. It is starting to get a bit better here. Uh, South Africa at the moment's in winter, so we'd rather be here um, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. maybe you could, I mean, I, 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 there is not much you can find, you can find about you two on the internet. Um, otherwise, <laughs> you, uh, you, you, I think you, you went to the same college or university in, 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 in Kaapstad or? Yes. Yeah. In, in Stellenbosch in, in South Africa. Um, we went to Stellenbosch University and we studied sports science, um, mm -hmm. a BSc in sports science. And then we went on to do a BSc honors in biokinetics, which is like, um, yeah, physical therapy, basically. Right. Exercise right. Is medicine. Um, yeah. And we met, we met in first year and yeah, that's. So you both have a background in, in uh, physical, uh, uh, rehabilitation. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I started, well, I did the biokinetics, same thing as Holly. And then while I was doing that, I started studying through another company. I know you're familiar with um, functional patterns. Um, and that's when I came over to, I mean, it was over in the Netherlands and I met um, Alex and them. And I realized there was a lot more to health than just uh, exercise and diet. You know, we've been taught, you know, just exercise five days of the week and eat a clean diet and, you know, you'll live an optimal life. And um, <laughs> yeah. I started realizing there's a lot more to it uh, than that. Yeah. Um, and it, it, just in my short experience when I was up in Netherlands, um, I got exposed to so many different aspects of health that I realized there was more to health than just, you know, those two things. And I started paying attention to a guy called Jack Cruz. Um, and he start, he talks a lot about your circadian rhythm and your light environment and I've always had the, the idea in my mind that we should be trying to live as close to our ancestors as, as um, you know, they used to live, uh, just because that's what would have shaped us into who we are today. And it's how our bodies evolved to live. Yeah. Um, so you guys thought, fuck it, we're moving to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we still need to actually find out. We're, we've done, uh, we did genetic testing last week. Um, so oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, 23 of me, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So nice. we're trying to find out exactly where we're from, because that's also, you know, really important if you want to figure out, should you be... Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I just I just got off of the phone with Ruth, and uh, he's helping Alex uh, uh, with some stuff. And uh, he also explained that, man, when your DNA is from country X, and you're eating the stuff from the light environment and the soil from country I, uh, I, I Greg, then you're constantly de- stressing the DNA, constantly stressing yeah. the DNA. So it's incredibly important to know your heritage and eat yes. your heritage. The hard, the, eat your heritage. What, what it, eat your heritage. <laughs> the, the one hard thing I think in that equation is the fact that ever since people have been able to travel, we're going to be a mixed race. You know, I'm not going to be pure French or pure something. You're going to be a combination of things. Um, so maybe that's a good thing in some way. You know, maybe you can eat food from slightly away from your origin because you've got, you know, part of your haplotype or your genome is from Iraq or something like that. And that, I think, right. is really exciting with 23 and Me is a lot of people find out that, you know, they're like, oh, I'm pure British or something. And then they find out they've got some, like, German in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was also quite shocking uh, to see my own results. I had uh, uh, most, most of my DNA is from the Netherlands and from Belgium and the north and the north and the west side of, uh, of the Netherlands. Then lots of the, a lot of, I think it was, well, I can even grab it. I'm curious, but well, it takes too long. Uh, German and uh, also from the UK, and I had some something like seven percent uh, Scandinavian. So I had, so I'm glad I had some uh, still have some uh, some uh, Ragnar Lovbrook uh, Viking. Yes, a little bit, a little DNA. bit of Viking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when are you expecting to to get the lab results from uh, from the test? Um, so we posted it last week. I think it takes about another week, I think. Yeah, I think two, two to three weeks. So we've yeah. got another another week or two. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But I know after that, there's also a lot of really cool things you can plug into. I know uh, Rhonda Patrick, um, yeah. though, she's often featured on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a whole website where you can plug in your 23andMe results and you can get specific like food oh. like, groups you should be eating. Yeah. Oh, that's um, dope. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do there's that. A lot of, there's a lot yeah. of like other sites and stuff you can plug the information into. Like 23andMe gives you kind of the framework or the or the the raw da- the raw data that you can still plug into other places and get more information. Right. Really cool. But yeah, coming back to the the light and and you know you want to find out a bit more about Holly and I. Yeah. So yeah. we then um, we went straight out of our degrees and started working. The first year we both um, did exactly what we'd studied to do. And in that year, about six months into studying, uh, six months into working, what we'd studied for five years for, um, we decided to start a company. We started Mycondria. And um, six months later, at the end of the year, we both quit our jobs. So our parents aren't too proud of us. Um, <laughs> we studied for five years and we don't use those degrees anymore. Yeah, because um, how, old, how old are you guys? Uh, I'm 25 and next 27. Yeah. Right. That's nice. <laughs> How old are you, Matthias? Uh, I'm 27. <laughs> okay. I'm a very, I have a very old soul. So. Oh, an old soul. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I recently did a show called Bliss Ayahuasca and I was uh, seeing the half part of my face uh, was my old soul and I was, uh, I was speaking to him. It was quite, uh, quite insane, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yes. Where did you do that? Was that in the Netherlands? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there is this uh, lady. Her, her name is Maria Johanna, and she organizes ceremonies for ayahuasca and ayahuasca retreats. But she also mm-hmm. uh, bought uh, Chocobliss ayahuasca. Well, that is a Peruvian cacao, 
it's like a choco tof. Uh, so you can just put it in, a, in the waiting room of a dentist and everybody will, <laughs> will blow their brains out on ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it really opens your heart chakra and uh, it enables you to get the benefits of ayahuasca but not go so fully into it. If you drink the ayahuasca tea, uh, I've heard, I've, I, I understand that there is no way back. You are in that moment and you will deal with yourself and you will, de- you will deal with the universe. But with Choco Bliss, you can, if it's like, uh, you can do that, but uh, like when you feel it is getting too much, you can just step out. Mm. Every moment you want. So it is a very nice portal to, for, for your consciousness to experience the universe. And uh, uh, you, you can just buy it. Uh, you, you also can buy it uh, from her. Uh, we're working on a, an affiliate deal at the moment. So you can get a discount code with Inja Dumb, as you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but man, I, I advise it to everybody. If, if everybody would take Shogo Bliss or Ayahuasca at this moment, given the time, I think world problems would whew, fade away. Um, you also you combined it with TRE, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, that was one of the things that I uh, experienced in the first trip, that my body started shivering so incredible. And every time I had to let go of a certain uh, blockage I experienced, and when I was uh, able to do that, my other muscle, other muscles in my body would start to tremor and release itself. So, yeah, it 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 releases muscle tension, it releases emotional stress, it it releases old thinking and neural patterns that you are carrying uh, through your mm-hmm. life so it is uh, it is wonderful when we, uh, when we when we were studying it was in our fourth year we actually got uh, we did a course on tre and uh, i remember they came and they you know told us all about this thing and they showed us this video of a girl shivering and yeah. i was so skeptical i was like this isn't gonna work like they made us like do all these weird things in the beginning yeah and nick sitting at the back like oh, yeah sure. yeah I was, I was so skeptical yeah. and then we, we we did all these exercise things and we got into you know we did the whole procedure and everything yeah. and i was lying on my back and at first my legs you know my legs started like shaking through this yeah. and i was like, really weirded out about this and i was still a little bit skeptical i was like maybe my muscles are just tired then, then it ran all the way up my psoas and it went right into my right shoulder, which is where I've had like heavy trauma. I, I fell a few years before and I've got a lot of like nerve damage in my shoulder. Oh. And there's obviously a lot of mental um, like blockage that I've gotten, a lot of mental trauma that I've got from the injury. And my whole shoulder, like it went right for my injury. My whole shoulder started like shaking like it was possessed. Um, yeah. I, that's when I realized like this stuff is, is real, man. It's, it's like something that we all should actually be able to tap into. Yeah. Um, it is, it is you know, so it easy. Is. And I, I think, I think when, uh, when you go back into, the, in, into history, you had these, uh, people in religion who did, uh, a catharsis, uh, uh, ceremonies where people would had similar experiences. And I've been reading some, uh, some images and books about that kind of stuff where, you know, they thought there was somebody was bewitched uh, or there was a ghost inside somebody. But the person who had the experience would also always be tremoring and getting in very weird uh, positions. And I, if you do TRE long enough, your face will start, will start doing it. And well, I, <laughs> I should make a video on that once when I when I uh, if I if I do any weed or hush and then do TRE my face is is, the, is like the Joker <laughs> you can make a movie about my face <laughs> but um, I totally agree man it's it's uh, it's it's uh, I I just got off the phone with Ruth and we also spoke about um, functional patterns and that. Uh, like Naudi and Alex, they have some internal battle, um, which is a mental thing. And they think if you get into the right posture, you stand up straight. Now you think straight. But you cannot do FP on your, on your nuts or your organs or, or uh, you know, the very specific details inside your body. And that's why uh, I think that your brain is more important than your physical being and i know they go together but tre enables you to get into the mental part of your brain and reading it out on your body without 
bringing your body into positions that are uh, that you have to work for real hard. Does it? I see it as a map for your emotions and your traumas that you carry around. Um, I mean, your your body is the the the, the uh, how do you call that? Um, the expression of your soul. And if you if your soul is feeling a certain way and you force it into a new position, then of course you will feel better because you look better, you move better, it it it, it frees up pain. But your soul, deep down inside, is still feeling that way. I think I, I I always, you know, people trying, they're quite linear in their thinking that it's one or the other, that either it's, you know, you've got to change your posture or you've got to change your mind state. But I think, you know, if you, if you look at the approach of, if you're in a really bad posture and you try and address your mind state, it's going to be really hard. But if you get into a better posture, you don't fix the problem, but you might unlock the pathway to make it yeah. easier to overcome that hurdle. So it's yeah. like, you know, it's, it's chicken or the egg. It's, it's instead of thinking, okay, let's just do one or just do the other. You know, yeah, that's what true. a I mean, I, crazy thought. Put the two together yeah. and, you know, we know that's going to be the best result. In the yeah, yeah. I, I mean, nature is, is, is context in context in context in context. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I try to ask, um, I was on an interview with Twimus um, a while back and I said to him, where's the best place in the world to live? I said, if we, you know, we've got an opportunity now, we think, okay, where's the best place to live? Do we go to the Yucatan? Do we go to, you know, somewhere in the world? Where's, where's the best place that, you know, I'm going to be the healthiest? And um, I wanted to get an answer based on my context. So I thought maybe Thomas would say, okay, based on my race or based on my genetics, where would be the best place? And he said, he can't answer that question. And he said, it's because if I'm not happy, you know, if I go and move to a place and I'm away from my family, I'm away from my mom and my brother, am I going to actually be happy? My brain is going to know that I've got this internal struggle all the time. So the best place in the world is the best place I choose actually. Um, you know, you can't say to someone, you must go and move into the middle of Peru or something like that. And then, you know, they're away from their, their loved ones and connections and things like that. So, um, you know, as you said, the, your mind can, can kill you actually at the end of the day, it can literally destroy your whole body. If it's, if it's it not can happy. make you commit suicide. So it, it yeah. is the most strong, uh, I think it's the strongest part of your being, your mind. Yeah, absolutely. But back to uh, you guys, you guys' history. So you did, uh, you had a, like a, like a bachelor in uh, in uh, physical therapy. So it's it's um, sports science, a bachelor of science in sports ah, science. Sports science, and, all right. And then in South in South Africa, they do it's called biokinetics. Um, it's mm. actually a really cool name, and I, I wish it was an international kind of thing, and people would use it. So it's bio, meaning life, and kinetics, movement. Yeah. So basically, using exercise as a form of treatment. So it's you know whether someone's um, had a stroke, then you're using exercise as a form of treatment. Or if someone's blown their ACL in their knee, it's using exercise as a form of treatment, which is a really nice. good direction to take. Um, it just t- tends to be quite quite linear in that it's you know exercise, exercise kind yeah. of thinking. So the whole you know how we both looked into light, and I'll get Holly to explain our story now with with mitochondria. But um, how we got into this is we just realized there was more to health than just uh, those two things. And that's, you know, we started playing around in the biohacking field and that's when you start learning all these other things. Um, and then, yeah, we decided to start a red light therapy company, which I'm sure Holly will drop into now quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> take it away. So yeah, basically um, I think it started for Nick before it did for me, the idea of, um, you know, we had this traditional kind of linear training um, Mm. and a lot of the biokinetics things we were doing were very much muscle isolations. You know, if you've got a hip problem, you work on that hip, you know, everything's, everything was just very, um, yeah, very linear kind of thinking. And yeah, I think Nick started questioning at first and then we started having more and more conversations about, you know, is this, is this really kind of the best way that we can serve people? And yeah, um, we, we both started looking into more and more different types of experts and um, yeah, spec, especially uh, Dr. Jack Roos. And yeah, it kind of, it kind of blossomed into how do we live the life that we want to live while serving people at a higher level than just, you know, dealing with that one little hip muscle rather than looking at, um, you know, the body as a whole. And yeah, I guess that's, that's how it started. Um, we started out of our little flat. Um, can I say last year? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, last year we started um, working out of our little flat, and we 
built an Instagram page and we built a, um, a website and we, you know, did all these things and we kind of ticked off all the things on the list. And the whole time we were furiously, furiously learning to try and see how we could best serve people and how we could reach people and how we could kind of build a tribe of people who were on the same mission as us. And, um, yeah, it's kind of grown and we've met amazing, amazing people and we've learned so much from everyone we've, um, you know, we've met yourself included and, yeah, I guess, I guess that's kind of just spiraled into where we are today. Um, yeah, we've just, we've just recently, I think two, two months ago, we launched our most recent uh, range of red light therapy devices, which were- Liquor free. I mean, I, I, yes, I, liquor free. That's awesome, man. Uh, that's, that's really yeah, dope. Yeah, zero EMF. All that's of zero those EMF, things. yeah, man. The, yeah. Those are yeah. the, are the, 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 U, the, the UBRs and the USBs uh, for biohackers. So what's been really, yeah. really cool is when we first started out, we came out of the range of, of devices and we, you know, figured out, you know, what, what is red light therapy doing at the moment? And, you know, what can we do in order to make an impact in the red light therapy space? But as Holly, Holly mentioned now, along the way, we've kind of, we've realized that our um, audience is not just uh, the general red light therapy audience. We have a lot of trainers. We have a lot of therapists. Um, yeah, so you even have a UFC uh, fighter and an, yeah, uh, and an Olympic fighter. ballerina or an Olympic uh, gymnastic? Uh, gymnast. gymnast, gymnast, yeah. Gymnast, um, yeah. And we realized that while most people are buying red light therapy devices to use it, um, you know, uh, like just up against their body and just stand still, a lot of our um, audience is, or a lot of our um, customers are very active members. So mm -hmm. that's actually why we launched the new range. We've changed a couple of the specs. So now you can treat at a further distance. So, you know, when someone's doing like the MFR or they're doing some kind of exercise, they, you know, in their gym space, they can, the devices that we have now are now <clears throat> powerful enough that you can get a treatment from a, a further distance. So, you know, we started out, how do we make, how do we get into red light therapy? And now we're going, how do we best serve our customers? Because now we know exactly who we're, who we're serving. Now right. we're able to, that's what's really exciting is our new range of products are literally geared towards um, our audience, which is, yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, again, yesterday I, I told you I'm, I, I'm so happy with the new website. It looks so dope. You have a beautiful uh, animation video of what explains, uh, of, gives a better image and explanation for people who have absolutely no clue what infrared light therapy is. Um, and it's just awesome to see you guys grow. I, 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 I've come to know about you because of Thomas van Dorn uh, and Gene Smates. And uh, amen. I, Again, it's a win-win-win situation. So if I can help you guys, helping other people become a more healthy person, then they help me creating a, a more healthy environment for the whole world. And uh, yeah, it just gives me a shitload of energy and, uh, and a big smile on my face. So uh, kudos. That's, that's and how did I, you, yeah. Oh, sorry. And how did you guys meet uh, during uh, college or university? Did you attend the same classes and you were, uh, you were having a massage or, uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, <laughs> and then the love sprinkled or, uh, how did that happen? So I'll let Holly explain, <laughs> I'll let Holly explain the details, but That's great. <laughs> we, we didn't get, we didn't get together while we were studying. So for four years we were, Oh, we were, you're a very professional. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we both had other partners, so we had to, had to be professional. Um, yeah, you can actually tell this Okay. One. All right. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of the way that the, the grouping systems work and the classes work and things is they group you together um, based on your surnames. And Kutsia and Camel are quite close together. So right. we actually found ourselves working together quite a lot in, you know, in small groups, group projects, things like that. And yeah, we were taking the exact same course. Um, we actually grew up about 10 minutes away in towns, 10 minutes away from each other, but we never met, which was really, ah. really quite strange. Um, I knew a lot of people that he grew up with and he knew a lot of people that I grew up with, but we, our paths never kind of crossed. She was in yeah. class with my brother. My brother was in her class. Ah. Yes. Yeah. And, cool. In high school. In and high we school. didn't know each other. Yeah. And, um, yeah, about, about a month or two into, into first year, I went like, Nick, you remind me of someone. I don't know what it is. I don't know who it is. You just, you remind me of someone. And then we eventually figured out that it was Zeus. <laughs> Zeus. Uh, oh, Zeus. Hey, you look like Zeus. Wasn't Zeus. Wasn't Zeus. <laughs> no, I was just saying that he, you know, he he reminded me of someone and we figured out that I was in school with his brother. And yeah. But your brother Zeus. looks like Zeus. His brother Zeus. <laughs> yeah, my brother does. <laughs> yeah. Um 
And yeah, I would say the relationship kind of um, evolved from there, from a very different place to where it is now. Mm. Um, <laughs> basically, Nick was that Nick was that guy who always argued with all the teachers and argued with all the lecturers and he always had something to say and most of the time he was right but even when he wasn't he would go for it every time Holly, Holly realized that while we were studying together that I was not someone that she wanted to be associated with because it would affect her marks because <laughs> I, would, I would argue with the people yeah, but then, right. you, you, are, you, you so you, you, you thought you knew everything and uh, did the teachers also liked you or you know what one of the problems was is I started studying the functional patterns training system quite early on in, in yeah, what we then, were doing. And then, then you're, uh, <laughs> you're not yeah. Yes. So they were, they were always talking about, you know, like muscle isolation and these kind of things. And I would like always try and show like bring up the bigger picture and they did not like that. I mean, no, I remember no. I, I heard that the year after I left, the one of the head lecturers actually spoke to the new, the new class that came in and they were like, look guys, it's okay to ask questions, but just, you know, don't challenge too much. There was this guy, Nicholas, who was here last year, who challenged the lecturers too much. And it's like, <laughs> they basically told them like, this is your box and this is where you must think. You can't think outside oh, of that. Anyway. Humans evolved to live outdoors with exposure to natural light from the sun. As such, your cells prioritize using certain wavelengths of light to make energy. Modern indoor lighting does not have the full spectrum of light you will get from the sun, which is where red light therapy comes into the equation. Harnessing the benefits of red and near-infrared light, red light therapy is scientifically proven to improve muscle endurance, muscle recovery, sleep, circadian rhythm, inflammation, skin complexion and much more. Multiple of the previous health experts I had on Injured Dumbass use it themselves and use it for their patients. And they all buy from Mycondria. So get your Flickr EMF free infrared light panels with a 15% discount. And that's education 101. <laughs> <laughs> education, yeah. Have fun. And then, so yeah, we, we carried on, you know, being friends through our varsity. And then in our honors year, we actually had to do our um, thesis together. Um, so between the two of us and with one other person, we did our thesis on concussions. Um, so we studied a bit of the brain and how people are affected after um, concussions. And um, yeah, we still didn't get together then. We, we both went off separate ways to do our internships. Um, I went to another part of South Africa to do that. Um, and then during that time, about halfway through that year, um, that's actually when I came to Netherlands. And from there afterwards is where Holly and I met up again and then got together. So yeah, Netherlands taught me about light and taught me that I needed to come back and find Holly all in one yeah. go. All right, wow. <laughs> There you go. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we're doing a great job in the Netherlands. Yes, um, we appreciate you. <laughs> but the, it, did any of your teachers, uh, were, you in a, were you in the position to give them a chamber? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. I was, I was in the position to give a chamber to um, the guy who took me for my uh, internship. So when I, when I started learning the first, I, I actually only learned chambers properly after I finished working that uh, would finish my internship. But I, I was very lucky that when I did my human foundations course in Netherlands, I went over to um, the UK. I met up with a guy called Bobby Filer, who's a really good um, FP practitioner. And he put me through a couple of chambers. Right. And then about three days later when I could walk, <laughs> <laughs> I got back onto an airplane. Um, and then in South Africa, yeah, I was able to, to do a couple of chambers there. Right. Cool so very, for, very for cool the stuff. people who have absolutely no clue what we're talking about, in functional patterns, they have chambers and chambers. Maybe you can explain what a chamber is, Nick? Um, yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, I can't actually give away too much about it. Um, it's a form of corrective. I don't want to call it a corrective exercise. It's a sequence of movement. I don't know. It's called an IMAP. If you look at, look at the, the technical definition, it's a sequence of movements that is just going to literally rewire the brain, the way that your brain moves. So it's literally going to retrain your body. What an optimal movement pattern is um, right. when it comes to like, especially it may, mostly focused on, on gait cycle, um, on how you, you walk and you run, but it's, it's nothing like a, a normal exercise. It's, no. it's extremely taxing on your body. It's um, extremely ta technical, technical. So it's very yeah. taxing on, on your brain as well. But when you come out of it, you can just, you can just feel it's right. Like you yeah, can man, just feel it, like it, 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 I, so I used to, I used to, I, I've seen so many physical therapists. I, I think plus 20 in my year. Uh, 
I I remember as today as yesterday. Oh, I remember like yesterday that I went for a straight year, two hours a week for to a dry kneeling specialist, and she always told me, "Your body needs time to adjust." All right, fair enough. What, so she, after, what she meant was she what? what she what she meant was you need to come here more often and keep paying me. <laughs> yeah, that, well, uh, of course she she didn't believe that she was she she sounded like a very sincere loving person but also when i think back she had weight problems uh she did powerlifting uh, uh she had her own hip issues like she didn't learn how to heal herself she didn't find the environment of people that were giving her the uh, the the right tool set uh to help herself so she was helping the best she could out of her frame of reference but uh when i did a chamber for the first time i found i finally got the feeling that I had all the time when I went to all those uh, physiotherapists, you should feel it immediately. You should feel the change immediately. Immediately. I mean, you are, it made me so conscious about the way I felt and how my body moved. And when there was something, I could immediately notice a difference in the way I, I walked or lifted my arm or something like that. But I never got out of physical therapy. And when I did PDTR, that's, uh, that's where my journey really started. I could, this guy, Gerben, he, he did some, some stuff, some muscle testing, and he rewired my, uh, my brain and my, my movement patterns as well. You just walk like a completely different human. Holy fuck, man, I'm using my left glute. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> my left, my left uh, glute medius wasn't working because I, uh, when I was young, I broke my left ankle. Uh, uh, when uh, when I was sitting at the back of my grandpa's bi- or grandma's bicycle and it got into the, the wheel and uh, later on in life I got into a fight in uh, on a holiday with, with some weird good dude who gave my gave a friend of mine out of nowhere a uh, headbutt uh, so I went to him and, and <laughs> I grabbed him and then suddenly the time went very fast and he got a, a bat one of his friends and he, he slapped me in the face with the bat so I lost some teeth and, and I got a cut in my face. And this cut and this part of my uh, 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 ankle, they send it signals to my glute medius that made it hypertonic. So it meant I couldn't use my glute medius, right? And it could, it, that meant my left knee where I got the injury was unstable all the time. And this guy fixed it in two hours and I was Bruh, holy fuck, man. Then you, then you notice this is truth. This is real. This is now. This is here. Mm. So when you go to a functional patterns practitioner and you go experience a chamber, then you think it's, it's like when somebody is telling you the truth, you feel it, you know it. Mm. And that's. Yeah, you know. So yeah, sorry, I'm that, just going to say. No, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to finish. That's, that's yeah. a chamber. That's functional patterns uh, in terms of biomechanics. And you can feel it immediately yeah you you don't walk away wondering you know is this going to work do i have to come back three or four times it's you you as you say you feel it yeah it's immediately a, it, it's like your, your body is actually almost addicted to it um you know it's it's craving that that feeling and that tension again um because it just feels like you've got electricity running through your body when you when you get yeah. it right yeah so so all right um you guys met you guys uh, started a relationship. You start. You got. You guys started Myconia. How did you guys learn to do business? How did you think of? Oh, I need to make a website. I need to do social media. I need to do this. Blah 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 blah. blah. Oh, Matez, it has been such a long process. <laughs> Literally, everything has just been learned from scratch. So everything you see in Myconia up until very recently has ju- has just been us. You know, we've been the website people, we've been the social media posts, we've been the the email people, the email integrations, the, you know, like I can, we know everything about domains and SMT integrations and all these crazy things we've had to do and coding stuff. Um, and up until very recently, it, it's just been us, um, which has been really nice because we know how everything works within the business. Now, so if I hire someone now to do my advertising or someone to do these kind of things, we know what it kind of should look like. Um, but in the last two months, we've had two people join us. Um, one girl who's really, really good with social media. Um, and you know, it's been really hard for us to figure out, you know, you can't just, especially for a a brand like ours, where we're trying to teach people about really, um, light, you know, it's kind of a, not, not a well-known topic. Mm. Um, so we had to find the right person who knew a lot about health and was able to 
you know, carry on a message like that. And the, the girl we've gotten is amazing. Um, she's done a really great thing with our social media. We're starting to see really good content with her. She goes into the scientific uh, research, which is really cool. Um, and then we've got someone else who's also helping us with a uh, customer support and also with a bit of, um, <laughs> so we've got a really good photographer who, who does our customer support and then <laughs> she takes cool photos and stuff for our, our brand and image as well now. Um, nice. So yeah, it's really cool. My country is growing. It's me and, me and three girls. So I definitely think business is, is going well. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, I, I I can fully understand you when when you say I have to do this, I have to do that, blah blah blah. You're as a starting entrepreneur, you're doing everything yourself, and you you're constantly learning, and and you have to be so incredibly flexible to just hmm. get the right information, test, retest, test, retest. I mean, only uh, at my pre- previous uh, employee, they didn't understand that social media can be a full time job. Yeah. Social media can be a fucking full time job if you want to do oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> let, let alone email marketing, <laughs> A B testing online with products and videos and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, but, but did you guys, did you start searching on YouTube, Google? I think, I think once you, you started with something, um, it would kind of lend itself to learning the next thing. So we would we would go, okay, yeah, you know, um, we, we need an email list. And, you know, this is how we're going to reach out to people. This is how we're going to build our community. This is how we're going to add emails to our list so that we can yeah, reach more people. Um, and then when you start working on your email list, you go, oh, okay, um, now, I need, now I need this. And then now I need to learn about this. So kind of every piece of software that we used and every step that we took, we then, it, it, yeah, it basically almost led us into the next into the next chapter. And as you say, we have to be quite, quite flexible because you think, okay, awesome. I found the software. It's going to work. It's amazing. Awesome. You know, we've got it down. And then you realize that it doesn't work for this one thing. So then you're like, okay, cool. (laughs) I know that. (laughs) Now we're going to use this. We're going to do this. And, um, yeah. I think it's a very, it's a very humbling process (laughs) because you start realizing what you, there's always something that you don't know. And even at, like where we are now, there's, there's, you know, there's something to learn about some new uh, website or, you know, some different way to run a sales funnel or something. And you, you're always going to find that if you want to be on top of the game is you've got to always constantly be learning something. You've got to be open to the idea that you don't know everything. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think, yeah, a lot of people struggle with that kind of thing. Um, but especially do, do, in, do, do you guys yeah. have any um, specific people, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, podcasts that you follow so you can improve your entrepreneurship game? Yeah. So, well, yeah. yeah. So, um, I when I oh, said so last year, I did do a course with a guy. I'm going to throw out his name now as well. As a guy called the Professional Vagabond. Um, he was his name's Ryan Sletcher. He was a guy actually from South Africa who um, really got us kickstarted with um, online entrepreneurship, and he showed us how to, you know, how to deliver value. I think that's what we re- we realized is in the beginning. If you want to actually make it work in this business, you have to deliver value, and that doesn't mean a good product. That means you know you're showing up every day and you're thinking, how can I deliver new content without charging people anything? How can I deliver new content to people? And that's what he really instilled within us. Um, and then I would say now for online stuff, we follow a lot of, um, guy called Russell Brunson. Um, he's the guy who owns ClickFunnels. He, a lot of his content's really good. Um, who else do we have with of that? It's yeah. yeah, it's so tricky because we kind of look to look to different um, different experts for each type of field. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we both we both um, looking at a lot of Tony Robbins stuff right now as well. Um, less about actual business entrepreneur stuff and more just about you know your mindset and that all around that. Do you um, know Do you know um, Garrett White, the guy who does uh, the Warrior Way? Uh, yeah, I know him, but I don't follow him. Okay. I, 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 I'm, I don't feel really attracted to the the whole bombastic, screaming, uh, aggressive shit. It, well, that's that's just my the way I've interpreted so for so far. Because and, and I already have. Uh, I, I then I prefer when I say Dan Pena, man, he's aggressive <laughs> as you can go, as you can get it. But uh, I prefer um, in terms of business. Well, that's what wasn't the question. So uh, n- no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, no, so, no. The reason I ask is because I mean, I mean, I haven't actually gotten into his stuff enough, but I just know that people in the same circles as us also do um, follow some of his stuff, and I've started looking into it now, and it it seems interesting. Um, you know, it's a lot about the the modern man and how you know there's a lot of things that um, you know it's similar to Jordan Peterson talks about the kind of things you know where it's almost like you should feel guilty for being a man, 
Um, and I think there's a lot of um, things in society that basically disempower men and almost make them feel like they can't, um, you know, try and stand out or try and be a dominant force yep. um, without hurting someone else. It's almost like synonymous that if you are too much of a man, then it means that you've got to abuse like your woman or something like that. But um, what I what I do like and what I have gotten from Garrett's kind of thing is that, um, you know, for the, what does he always say? For the, for the kingdom to be whole, the king needs to be whole first. You know, so before you try and change the world, make sure that you've changed yourself enough um, that you're at a point that your environment and people around you can grow off you instead of you just trying to fix every everything mm-hmm. else. Uh, but yeah, I'm still very early into that. Um, Jordan Belfort. John, uh, John Belfort. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan Belfort. <laughs> nice. I love yeah, that guy. <laughs> we do. I, I've seen I've seen the movie. I think four or five times now. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Very entertaining. Um. That's about that's about it. Yeah. Other than that, it's it's good old YouTube. That's where the the education comes from. A lot of YouTube education and you know whatever you need these days. Honestly, it's we we live in such a crazy time at the moment that if you want to learn something, you're just going to Google. Just going to the, YouTube. Yeah, that's it. true. But then again, I also I also this, but that's my opinion. Uh, I learned in the last eight years that I started living on YouTube that I also there's also lots of crap. There's also lots of people who tell you how to do something. Uh, like for instance, uh, one of my 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 specialties is, is YouTube, and there are a lot of people who started a YouTube channel on how you should start a YouTube channel, but. They didn't have a big YouTube channel, mm. but they were explaining other people how to get a, a a big YouTube channel. But I found it very often the people who do that kind of stuff because, of course, it's stuff that people are searching for. So when you are giving, there is a demand for information. And you're just giving the information, but there are a lot, mm. lots of people who don't know. They they tell they tell you something about health, but they themselves are not health. Exactly. That's what you said about that therapist earlier. You know, if the therapist isn't healthy and they're in pain, should they really be teaching you? I mean, should you take, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get a, a diet plan from someone who's obese. No. Um, you know, if, if, if it's not working for them, it obviously doesn't work. And that, no. that's, that's, that's a really, you know, it's a good point. And I think it's something we should apply to a lot more fields. I mean, there's a lot of doctors out there, the doctors that are overweight and you've got a question, how can a doctor be overweight? Surely they should know better. And that, that points to the fact that there's so much misinformation out there. Are you looking for any supplements to boost your health because you want to restore, maintain, or achieve optimal health? Our friends at Ergomax from the Netherlands got you covered. From deuterium depleted water, enzymes and probiotics to magnesium and vitamin C. It is your one-stop shop for supplements. I know the owners, and I know they care about quality and they themselves are an example of healthy human beings. And three of my previous guest experts are very happy with their products. They use them personal and for their patients as well. I'm talking about mitochondrial expert Thomas van Dorn, clinical psycho neuroimmunologist Ruth Elfers and biological dentist Merlon van Ravenstein. If they would not approve, I would not be sharing Ergomax. Thomas Ruder Merlin helped me big time achieving a more optimal form of health in my life. So let me help you helping yourself. Get your supplements at Ergomax and feel free to send me your experience with their products. You'll find the link in the description and the show notes. Now, back to the episode. Sure. Uh, you should always be comfortable to ask, hey, dude, uh, you're teaching health. Why are you so fucking fat? Absolutely. Because there's, there's no ways if someone's, let's say someone's got a medical degree, that means they've studied for eight years. That person doesn't have a problem with commitment. If they knew what the right thing to eat was and the right way to lose weight was, they could commit to that. Right. But they obviously don't. And, and to me, that just screams misinformation. People have been told you need to have, you know, you need to eat whole grains in your diet and you need to have lots of vegetable oil. And people are just committing to the wrong thing. I think that's, that's one of the biggest problems, just misinformation, people that commit to the wrong kind of ideas yeah yeah and that's also i think i think one of the things that i uh, uh, also learned from now just recently is that if you want to be something or someone who's doing something don't go to the person the, the, like thomas always explains uh, when you want to learn how to build build a bridge you don't go to a fisherman mm. it's the most basic analogy you can give somebody and everybody is like yeah that sounds logic so 
when why do you go to a doctor who's fat to who's going to teach you how to be a healthy person yeah. uh, why do you go to a physiotherapist uh, who is fat and has biomechanical issues and is going to teach you how to be pain free but then again in and uh, i i've started doing jiu jitsu uh, uh, last year you can always learn something from somebody else i mean a blue belt can always teach a white belt and you know, you know you have the rank so you can always learn from each other but you have to know the difference and you have to know the the level that somebody's on but therefore you have to become you have to become health you have to become a bridge you have to think like the the subject otherwise you will always be in a position of here's my arm give me a massage yeah here's my piss give me a pill you know uh, 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 give me the, give me the solution you are responsible for your own fucking health Work on it. Think on it. Be it. So nobody's going to help you. You are the one who's going to help yourself. So I think that is that is a, a message that I want to get get out to people is that you are the person who's responsible for your own health. Don't think every, that ever, anybody else is going to fix it for you. But then again, I'll also listen to somebody who is doing like a big entrepreneur, uh, 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 a great therapist, uh, uh, a great person in, in what field soever. Find people who are what you want to become or want to do. Learn from those instead of, you know, feel feel okay. Be critical. Be the child who is constantly asking questions. Hey, dude, why are you doing this? Why are you so fat? Why are you this? Blah, blah, blah. Like children, they have absolutely no shame <laughs> just asking questions like machines. And I think that's, that's how you learn. Yeah. And, and that's how you learn. And uh, children also have the tendency to act like they are. And that's also a very nice uh, thing that the children use to learn. Yeah, they act like a dog. They act like a cat. They act like a tree. And that's how they learn how that subject is experiencing life. But um, all right, the entrepreneurship, that's uh, a stick. But I, I thought it was, it's also quite interesting for young people who want to learn more about entrepreneurship and health because I think there's not many people who are, in my opinion, really solving or enabling people to solve problems in health uh, who are also living health themselves. I know I, I studied food and nutrition. I studied food and business. So I know lots of di- uh, dietitians. But then again, uh, uh, um, also in my opinion, there are not many healthy or optimal living people. I mean, they have light in their eyes. I know they, they want the best for themselves. I know they want the best for their clients. But I think you two are an example. Uh, uh, for other young pr- people and other uh, health people, other entrepreneurs. So that's why I thought it was important to cut open the entrepreneurship, uh, entre- entrepreneurship part as well. So, all right, uh, a bit more into your daily routines. Uh, Holly, <laughs> what, is, okay. what is your daily routine? How do, you be, how do you maintain a healthy lifestyle and still being flexible and uh, getting the work done that you want to do? Yeah, I think um, I think I think the word flexible is a lot um, a lot to do with <laughs> a lot to do with the daily routine because because it changes you know it changes um, depending on what season we're in and it depends on what's kind of what phase of work we're in. So at the moment we're we're really kind of stuck in a lot of um, we're almost kind of uh, nose to the grindstone quite a lot because we're we're working on just a new website and basically just optimizing everything there so at the moment it's kind of like quite a high yeah high intensity work environment um but we really try not to make that the 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 biggest thing of the day so to start beginning of the day um we wake up and we look outside and we go okay great we're in the uk so is it is it dark gray today or is it bright gray and some days it's bright gray (laughs) and (laughs) that's that's when you know it's going to be a good day um yeah so we always start with a walk um barefoot walking getting some grounding, getting some sun as much as we can, even if it's a little bit chilly and yeah, come back, um, make a good nutrient dense breakfast. Always, always. It's a, it's a, it's a big part of everything. And, um, yeah. And then we kind of bring it back into the, what <laughs> bring it back into, um, get started with some work, sometimes some, some motivation, things like that. And then, um, yeah, it, our day is basically interspersed with a little bit of movement, a little bit of walking, a little bit of work, a little bit of chilling. <laughs> yeah, do you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I think it's um, if 
as soon as you start working for yourself, you realize you're, it, it's a scary thing. You're both in control of your routine and you're not, you know, when you work for someone else, you've got to be there at eight o'clock and you've got to, you know, do that kind of thing. So you've got to be able to self-motivate yourself, which is yeah. obviously a harder thing to do as an entrepreneur. Mm. But on the other end of the spectrum is you can control exactly what you're doing. So, you know, we've got a really nice routine. We, we can wake up, we go for a walk. Um, you know, we come back, we have our shower, we have breakfast. Um, you know, we can really optimize our morning routine. There's no one saying you can't go and watch the sunrise in the morning, which is what we you know trying to do every morning. Um, so yeah, our, our routine's pretty, pretty static, um, as I think it should be, but it also, you know, we, we're able to move a bit more with the seasons, which I think is really important. You know, if it, if it is winter, we can sleep in a little bit more. We don't have to wake up before, you know, while it's still dark and start getting dressed and force ourselves to drink coffee to get up. Um, but then in summer, you know, we get up early and we can get everything done and we can work really early and then still have the rest of the day, um, to relax in that, which is, I think one of the, the benefits of being, um, your own, your own boss or being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I recently, I, uh, I stopped working for, uh, for, uh, for a boss. Uh, but fortunately because of the COVID crisis, I also, one of my future clients, uh, had to listen and wait for hey what are my clients doing because we had a very very big uh, uh, project in the in the pipeline uh, which could have made us lots of money so we could grow uh, uh, rapid more rapid but um, then again uh, pff, man just being free and and I, all right now what 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 do I want to do I can do, do you know what you know what's interesting Matthias and I mean I I don't want to shame I don't want to um, make anyone feel bad about this whole COVID-19 time um, and what, you know, their work, obviously you've lost business, but for us, and I think this gives us, gives us a bit of hope of where humanity is going for us. um, We've actually been really busy. It's been some of our busiest time during COVID-19. And I think it's because people have realized they've been spending money on dumb shit. You know, they've been going to restaurants and uh, eating out. I like restaurants. Fuck you, Nick. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I, I meant, I meant like every night eating out every night and, you know, drinking all, all the time or whatever. And I think people have realized, okay, I can stay at home and have a home cooked meal and I can save a bunch of money doing that. And people have stopped prioritizing. Maybe I should buy that red light therapy device. I've been wanting for a while now. People are starting to prioritize their health. People are starting to go, this is, this is some real shit. You know, there's, there's this the virus across the world and uh, you know, it's killing a whole bunch of people, you know, whether or not, whether or not, let's say whether or not COVID-19 is really as bad or, or good as they say, something like it could happen. I think that's the biggest thing people have realized is even if this isn't it, something like this could happen in the future. Absolutely, and you don't want to yeah. be, you don't want to be, um, you, you're not going to play catch up with your health. You know, it's not like you can just flick a switch and in two, three months, your, your health's just going to pick up. That's yeah. something you got to build up. And I think a lot of people have woken up to that now and they're going, okay, it's time to prioritize our health. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. I think that's been really exciting for us is because a lot of people have woken up and were like, we told you. <laughs> yeah, right. Can I interject you there for a second? Because yeah. uh, we are, you know, I know you know Jean Smates, the, the functional planning practitioner from uh, Hoogvliet Rotterdam. Jawel. And one of his friends, uh, Ricardo Oskam, he always ne- uh, makes a very nice comment. Um, when you're eating like terrific foods, when you're putting lots of money into food and uh, light, he says, this is for your health bank account put it in your health bank account. I, I always, I really like that analogy. Like, I mean, yeah, you're investing. You, yeah, you're investing in your health, man. It's okay, man. Spend money. Yeah. <laughs> and also, and also it means it's like, okay, so if you keep investing in that bank account, let's say there is something you want to go out and you want to have, you know, a glass of wine or you're going to have ice cream or something. You can do that because you've built up your health. You're not doing right. it every day. Absolutely. Um, you know, you, you can actually go out and be flexible when it needs right. to. Right. Yeah. You've invested in your health. Yeah. That's, that's also one of the things I still like to, I mean, I still like to get fucked up more from time to time. <laughs> a thera- a therapeutically getting fucked up, I like to call it. And because <laughs> you're living at an eight or a nine or a 10, you go to a five. Instead, when you're living constantly on a six, you go from six to two or a one and you feel completely wrecked as a human being. <clears throat> and uh, you will not be able to contain that lifestyle until the day you die. Uh, at, at, least, at, at least that's what I think. But um, yeah, all right. <laughs> Where were we? <laughs> you were talking about COVID-19 and your guys' work, I think. Yeah, right. Like the, it also, the, 
the the freedom you have you experience experiencing like all right i can give my body the proper sleep it needs if it wants to sleep longer it, it it is it is possible i can get up watch the sunrise i can get out and go for a long walk uh you can really de-stress yourself much more easily uh, and i think that's also one of the benefits that uh, uh i'm seeing also with uh, uh, companies and one of the therapists uh, gerben here who's the pdtr practitioner he also treats one of the top men's of uh uh, KPN, that's a big telecom company. And he was saying to Gerben, he's, he's like, man, we're seeing an, a, such a big increase, uh, increasing uh, productivity with our employees. And he's like, do you think that's strange? He's like, well, I kind of do. He said, all right, well, let's, let's, uh, let's go through the day. You wake up uh, early, it's still dark outside. You go into the car, you stand in traffic, uh, you're already stressed, then you get on, then you get on your job. Everybody's standing uh, in the coffee corner getting some coffee because everybody's feeling fucked and that's social stuff. So you get a, you get a cup of coffee. Then you, you know, you're talking for 30 minutes to people. Then you go check your email. You're constantly giving yourself new stressors. And then you start working instead of, hey, I'm home. Hmm. I can start working. I can check the sunrise for 20 minutes instead of standing in traffic, drinking coffee, talking to people, watching my email. You can... You can be so, it's, life is so much more easy and simple. And he says, man, it's completely normal, I think, that productivity is increasing nowadays. And that's why, that's one of the positive things that companies are seeing. Hey, people are more productive working at home. We need to follow this line. <laughs> we need to follow this trend. So that's also one of the big uh, uh, ups, I think, about the COVID uh, pandemic. You know what I think it's, it's come from is... is we get stuck in a pattern and I don't mean us, I mean like society as a whole where you have to go into work. And I think it's because in the old days you used to have to do that. Everyone, if you were working in an office and everyone needed to be talking about the same thing, you all had to be in the same place. Yeah. But the, the day and age we live in now, you know, we've got the internet and we've got phones and we've got all these things. I mean, I've got one of my friends in South Africa who's, uh, he's a interior designer and they've got like really intricate software that they've got to be working with the architect and they've got to be sharing all the stuff. And they're literally like, they're all staying at home and they're sharing information between them while they're designing like a $20 million house between all of them. And they just share this information between each other. And they're all sitting at home. And I, I mean, there's these huge buildings in, in the main um, building of Cape Town where they've realized they can now literally operate with everyone living in their home. Yeah. What do you guys think is the best or the, the, the most beautiful part that you're seeing right now or experiencing yourself from the COVID-19 uh, stuff? The most beautiful, what, aspect of it? Yes. It, it's like a hard biggest one. Biggest pro. Because, yeah, biggest pro. Um, I think, you know, it's a difficult thing to answer because for us, our our personal lifestyle hasn't changed that much because we we mostly cook at home, we, you know, we go out and we, we see, um, we go out for walks and we get our grounding, we get our nature, we do things. Um, so f yeah, for us personally, it hasn't changed that much. Um, I would, I would say it's, it's more seeing people prioritize things, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's really nice to see people just put things in perspective and realize what's important again. Um, and I think, I hope that that's what carries on after this whole situation. And, and people are also going to appreciate, you know, human contact. People are going to appreciate, start being able to, um, you know, the things you take for granted, you take for granted that you could fly somewhere and, and be with your family, or you could uh, go somewhere and, and live, like lie on the beach. That's going to be so appreciated. Um, now yeah, if, there, if there are no drones with cops or f uh, telling you to fuck off and like, uh, I mean, yeah. they're over here, they're flying with drones and I live very close to the beach. And they also fly through the neighborhood to check out if you're not having a party with more than five or six people. It's, it's, it's completely uh -huh. insane. And man, but, uh, um, no, <laughs> no, one no so about that. Today. Just on that topic, you, you think that's bad in South Africa, they have got some laws in place that make no sense. So you can, they've just opened up clothing stores again, but you can yeah. only buy certain clothes. So there's a whole list of different clothes you can buy. One of them you can't buy is t-shirts. You're not allowed to buy t-shirts while it's locked down. You can buy a jersey, you can buy all these other clothes, but it's not winter clothes. They're not, they They're haven't, not essential. it's not essential because it's not winter clothes. So you don't need to buy a t-shirt. You just need to buy your jacket. And they, they have <laughs> the health advisors that are in the, in the government are 
completely retarded, I think. Well, yeah. they're not health advisors. I mean, you look at the pictures of them. I mean, I remember so, I saw a meme the other day, and it's like these are the people we're taking health advice from, and they all look sick and obese. And yeah, back to the same topic we were talking about earlier. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh, <laughs> not to make words uh, too much far about that because we still have to produce this content on YouTube and we don't <laughs> YouTube yeah, like this, this shit. Yeah. Well, for, for that conversation, I would highly advise people to just visit londonreal.tv slash, uh, uh, forward slash freedom. London Real Army. So, all right. Um, yeah, so the pros about the COVID is that people are experiencing uh, or starting to realize working at home we can still accomplish awesome things from home we can still we we learn that a healthy lifestyle is more important back in the days because i mean now we have if you get a mutation from this virus it's going to be something else and you know vaccines are complete bullshit in my opinion you have an immune system you have to be flexible and nature is flexible so you can think linear like you say in a non-linear non-linear reality by mm. just getting a vaccine for every problem you have. It's it's like a bandage for a moon. You don't need that shit, man. You're not made from... That's one of the things that I still like from Ido Portal is that he, he always says to his students, man, you're not made from sugar, man. You are not made from sugar. You're a fucking human being. You, you, you've you lived through all these years of evolution. Do you think if there would come a virus, you would fade away like 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 this, like a Fugazi, like a Fugazi? <laughs> absolutely not man so uh respect respect evolution respect the earth respect your immune system don't put shit up in your own body so uh that's also one of the things that i think that's a big pro about this uh, this uh, this corona stuff that i think people are getting more sensitive and more conscious about their health and uh that's absolutely important also one of the things is very cool that Thomas von Dorn was reading Rudolf Steiner and uh, one of the things that he wrote about was the age that we are living in right now. It's, the, it's I think it's called the Atlantic Age and uh, Rudolf Steiner predicted that the human species would create a technology that w- would bring people more close together but divert them uh, uh, even more. Um, mm. And it eventually would destroy individualism. So, we're in a like in a like a century where we <clears throat> learn that we we have to go through the pain of thinking only about me 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 and then realizing ah we're part of the universe we're part you 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 and I are the same we're we're part of a collective field of energy and a collective field of of consciousness now if, if I fuck you up I'm fucking myself up so I better respect you this plant mm-hmm. uh, this fish this cat. So I don't fuck up my own environment. True. Yeah, exactly. I, I like the point you made about also, uh, you know, it, it, we're getting closer together in terms of, you know, we can all be on Instagram and we can all be chatting to each other, but we're so far apart from each other because we don't actually connect on a, on a real level. But I don't know if you know, you, I mean, have you seen Instagram in certain countries is taking away the, the like uh, button? Um, really? Oh, shit. You, know, you, can't, <laughs> you, know, you can't get likes anymore and you can't, you know, when you post, you won't see how many likes it is. Um, is actually, I was Gary Vaynerchuk was talking about this. Gary yeah, v. I, I know, I know that update where you couldn't see anymore where how many likes you got, but I didn't yeah. know knew yeah. that you couldn't like something anymore. Do you know how? Do you know how much of uh, I think such a good move that was on Instagram or Facebook's um, side because they own Instagram. Um, basically, what they were saying is because what's happening is a girl will go onto um, Instagram and she'll post a picture of her body, of her bum, or something like that, and she'll get five hundred likes. And then she'll post a picture where she'll be like talking about something real, you know, like something that she's, uh, you know, just something from real, real life, something that actually is relatable or something that is, you know, not doctored or photoshopped or something like that. Or like a beautiful photo of nature or something. Well, yeah, like a photo of nature or something. And you'll get, she'll get 50 likes. And what ends up happening is people start going, okay, if I want to get validated, I need to either post a picture of my abs or my ass or something like that. And like you said, it destroys individualism. People are scared to express themselves in any other way except for, you know, what gets the most likes on, on social media. So that's what Instagram is trying to do is they're trying to get less away from the same content all the time and try and make, make it more like of an expression. So everyone, every different profile is more different than the other mm. instead of, of 
ninety percent of Instagram just becomes bums and and stomachs. Yeah, right. No, that's that's very cool. I never bums bums. thought of it that way. That's uh, that's dope because one of my uh, one of my best mates, he just uh, yesterday he sent me this uh, this, uh, this 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 uh, this women on Instagram. Uh, I I I need to show this one. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, of course, private. All right. Yeah, there is this girl. Her name is Fit for Callis. Uh, she studies biomedical sciences. But you know, she has the body of uh, like a, like a, like Aphrodite. Maybe you can see it. Um. Uh huh. Okay. Got you. All right. So, but the, the, the I mean. She she's getting validated because of her, the way she looks, uh, but he always likes to make fun of the things that they write that they write about in the in the description. All right, here it comes. There is always more than than what meets the eye. Think about that for a second. <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> That's deep. very deep. That's yeah. very. And then he always said, is, "Oh man, I'm so I'm feeling so motivated right now." <laughs> 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 but That's what I mean when I. Maybe they are very sincere, but I mean, all those women are just showing pictures of themselves uh, standing in a in a in a in a in a way, and we we inter- interpreted that as a, a lost, uh, I think, a, a sexual a picture because we're the media is constantly bombarding us with this is the way you should look and this is sexy and this is not. So um, that's your frame of reference, but. The text, well, the lines that are putting beneath the pictures, always there. Come yeah, on, man, one. fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> just, just there's post a, a picture of your butt and then put a peach under beneath there, man. It's it's, it's okay. Pete, you're still getting likes, man. Fuck off with the. You don't the need the daily motivation. <laughs> the daily motivation of ass. Mm. <laughs> oh man. All right, back to my country. How uh, how how is the future for you looking now? Because uh, did did for, for instance the the UFC fighter and. Um, uh, the gymnast and uh, of course Gene is also on your uh, on your uh, on your website who is also very uh, very uh, yeah he's very famous in the world I think um, how did you do you guys reach out to people like that how, do they find you how how does it work both to be honest both um, we have some people reach out we reach out to people in the same kind of niche um, yeah, to be honest, we haven't focused enough on the affiliates. Um, it has kind of been people coming to us more than more than the other way around. Um, like the UFC fighter, and that came from one of our customers knew someone, and it and it ended up happening. But we probably will get a bit more active on that. Um, where my country is going at the moment, we're trying to figure out the the best way to deliver the information. So with red light therapy, there's there's very specific. You know, people get really complicated with it and they go, okay, this is. If you want a certain kind of benefit, then this is how how much um, energy or joules you should be getting uh, per session, and you can really dial that in um, and try and copy the scientific study. So the guys who you know, people who know how to read scientific articles, they will read a, an article on red light therapy, and they'll know the exact specifications of their device, and they'll be like, okay, the device emits 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, and then they'll be able to figure out you know exactly what kind of dosage they're getting. We're trying to make that more digestible for hum- for just normal people to understand. So we're trying to come up with a way where we can go, you know, give summaries of studies so people know, okay, if I want to inc- increase my hair growth or if I want to have better muscle endurance, this is the kind of um, therapy session I should be doing. And we want to make it so that the person doesn't have to do the calculations. So if they look at whatever device they've got, they can literally have like a, a we're making like a software or a calculator where people can figure out exactly what they need to be doing. because. There's so there's so much um, potential for red light therapy. There's so many different benefits associated with it that what what most red light therapy companies end up doing is just giving blanket statements of this is what you know here ten to fifteen minutes or five to ten minutes whatever it is uh, two to three times a week. But you know we know that for different benefits there's different uh, kind of protocols that you can follow. Um, so the biggest thing we're focusing on now is we've got the, the, the right product. How do we get the, the right information to people that it's easy to digest? And they can maximize, you know, their use out of a red light therapy device. Yeah. So everyone can get the results that they're after, basically. Yeah. Right. And how do you maintain the, the level of knowledge for yourselves?